Good afternoon. This is the Lamp House, and I'm Lottie Lamp, and I'm going to show you today some things that I grew up with. Okay, first of all, this room was always referred to as the porch room. Okay, so it was always never added on. It was always part of our life. Um, so when, when you walk into the room, you look up here, you will see my father's fishing pole. Two of them are my father's. Then you will see a, a sawfish bill that was in the house that's always been part of our family. When they go, people go fishing, they would get these sawfish in their nets and they would cut off the, the front of their nose and let the fish die in the water, which was kind of crude, but that was happening. We have a, a collection of cameras. Everybody had a camera in the old days. And the second shelf down, uh, a couple who was in the picture there donated their old car they had an old car, auto, and they donated the little smaller ones, okay? We have a collection of turpentine, the turpentine industry. Farrell Davis in Inglewood, he was from the old family. He uh, collected all of this. Um, he sent away for syrups, and I have a, a little picture here where he sent for a turpentine uh, syrup, and it was found in an old, in an old, uh, in Pennsylvania, uh, Beaver County, Pennsylvania. It was found in a grocery and meat market store, and the son um, said they were remodeling and found this bottle, and he sent it to Farold. Today, it's, it's the oldest store in Pennsylvania area there. Now it's a Nichols meat market, probably. Oh, we have something interesting here. Everybody had an uh, oven and you put the oven on top of your stove and it would make biscuits just like this. Pat, Pat Lamp loved biscuits in the morning and, his, and my mama, Edith, made them every morning for him. And these were sold at Sears and Roebuck. They weren't homemade, they were sold. Everybody had one. If you were camping, you would put one on top of your burner and it would bake. So that was kind of cool. And we have just some things for children. We have these wonderful puppets uh, that represent all the different races of children. And you can come and play with them while your mom is looking at the museum. We have uh, two, two benches, school benches. And this is told to me that these were from the schools in Inglewood. They were sold at Sears and Roebuck, so we have a, a picture of a Sears and Roebuck there. The typewriter is an old typewriter too. It was donated to us by a gentleman, and he was real proud to donate it. So it's always good to add that to our desk. We have another school desk here. It has a nice little chair you can pull out. And the children can come and sit there when they come to visit and draw or do some pictures, because we have those. Okay. We have pictures on the wall here. They're always going kitty wumpus. Oops. They're the Lamp family. They're my family, okay? Picture of me on the left, Lottie, and my sister Doris. Doris is born in 1915. I was born in 1909. My brother Buster was born in 1912, and my brother Earl was born in 1918. So we always had a lot of picnics in the yard. Up on the top picture, we have my grandfather, L.A. Anger Sr. He's sitting at the head of the table. Oh dear, isn't that beautiful? Out in the yard. Everybody did things in the yard. Of course, it was too hot in the house. Okay, we, we have a new exhibit now. We have the Summermeyer exhibit. They are the people that lived in the Quinby House on the corner, everybody referred to as a Jurgens house. But Jurgens didn't live there, the Summermeyers did. Tom Summermeyer, the gentleman in the bottom, is the one that married Amy, Amy Jurgens. He married, he was a top salesman for the Jurgens company, and he met them, uh, took them to the boat one year, and after the, when they came back after a year of traveling Europe, then they, um, there she there, and Anne is their daughter. They had two children, Anne and Tommy. Tommy's the picture we, fellow we saw in the fishing picture. And we have some Jurgens lotion. 
every all the ladies loved the Jergens lotion because it was smelled like roses. <laughs> oh, oh, and the next shelf down is uh, my family's paraphernalia, all kinds of stuff. <laughs> this is just <laughs> just a, just a bunch of stuff. I haven't got it. it it's not organized yet, but it's stuff from our past. The, the hand is, is to make gloves on. Oh, that's, a, that's what they use to form leather gloves on, okay? <laughs> okay. And over at the next exhibit, we have just some Indian exhibits, and we have a lot of a collection of bottles. Now, these little, t little uh, lamps here were given to me, given to my sister Doris by our uncle Leslie, or else he, we called him Wilbur. Okay, he always had, always giving something to us. Oh, yeah. the Indian exhibit is, is some little Indian dolls. Okay, they are from uh, Lake Okeechobee people. Uh, and the pictures are uh, Patty Weghurst, a girl that lives in Inglewood, uh, went to school with the kids in the picture on the left, the postcard. So, and down below we have our little exhibit of, of paraphernalia people brought back with them from the war. Um, everybody notices the dish, and in this one picture, we have uh, the lamps, and the little boy was the great-grandson of Sarah Buck and Kelly. He's sitting on a bullet. I don't know where the bullet went. My brother Buster's on the right with his buddy during the war. Oh, yes, anyway, that's enough of it. Okay. Okay. Oh, there's so. There's our museum cat. Her name is Sassy. Sassy, she's resting now. Um, in this room, we have interesting things. Um, this was our living room, and we have ladies of the 20s wearing fashions of the 20s. That was probably a foxy lady in the black. And then we have a lady also wearing an open cut work uh, embroidery dress from the 20s. It's the linen dress and it was very fashionable in that time also. And then our lady in gold, she has a dress that has trapunta on the bottom uh, and uh, she was very classy. Uh, she was a, uh, her granddaughter or her niece from Rotunda uh, donated that dress and we've worn it in fashion shows too. So that's kind of cool. So next to that, we have a, a bench. Uh, people used to call them phone benches. So you'd sit on the bench and talk. That's where you had your crazy telephone. Next, we have the Mrs. Bartlett Tracy. Uh, she um, is an artist from Artist Acres. They donated the settee and the table and a chair, a couch, a little chair. Um, they started Artist Acres in 1934. The first house was built there. And a lot of little cottages that were made for artists to come to Inglewood and paint in the winter. And she wrote several books. And she did a lot of wonderful things. People don't really realize all the things she did. Uh, here we have pictures of my family, the Lamp family. Um, some things are treasures found in the attic. Um, and then the next picture is the Old Inglewood Inn. Um, Daisy, Daisy Lamp is sitting down on the porch on the right side. Um, she was Sarah's young, older daughter. And then we have more lamp people. And then we have a picture of a treasures of things found in the attic. Then we have Sarah Buck and Lamp Kelly with her, all, her five children, three, four, five, six children. And then Doris, Doris Lamp had a Lamp's clothing store. Then on the right, we have the old school teachers. Uh, Tommy Summermeyer, the one I showed you out on the porch. Uh, anyway, Tommy Summermeyer, the one that was fishing, is the little guy right here. And this is Lottie, me and some cousins. Uh, Stanley Lamp was a, a person in town that did, did a lot of subdivisions. He was my father's youngest brother. And in this picture, he's got the boot of a, of a palm cabbage and trimming it up so we can cook it up 
with some salt pork and make a good, delicious meal. Then you see a picture of my mother with my younger brother, Earl, in front of our bungalow. We had a bungalow that was next door. My mother, it was in my mother's name in 1913. She moved into that building. And my uncle Stanley had an automobile and he bought that in 1914. The thing is that crazy automobile came here from Kansas. It drove across the Mississippi, of course on a barge, and it came here uh, from the Cross family. They came every winter uh, to uh, New Point and Comfort and they sold that car to my Uncle Stanley. Then we always had picnics at Yale, Yale Street and this picture is our family at Yale Street, probably about 1920 or 21 because my old brother was born in 1918 and he looks about four years old there. And then we have the, when we had the uh, Pioneer Day, we had all the old pioneers get together in 1956, and that's the picture of them. And the collage picture, we won't even talk about that one. <laughs> Oh, here's a picture of uh, Pat Lamp and, and Uncle Wilbur. Uncle Wilbur always had a mustache and he maintained that forever. This is the same picture we saw earlier with the little boy, um, little Clark baby on the, on the shell casing. And uh, let me see, we have uh, the plaits, the plaits. Uh, Don Platt and Earl, oh, Don Platt and Earl Lamp, and the other one was Buddy Platt. We didn't know who that was, but that was Buddy, his brother. This is a picture of the Inglewood Inn, which on the very end of Perry Street on Lemon Bay. Uh, it was a place with a lot of rooms and a lot of people from out of town came, as we saw up in the up, up, upper picture with uh, Daisy, Daisy Lamp on, on it. Um, but it did burn in 1909. Then a picture of Doris. I think that was her first store-bought dress. She said she got it up in the Upper Peninsula when she was going to, on her way to California to the war camps to take care of her sister-in-law. And then we see Buster Lamp, my older brother Buster, and his wife Ethel. Uh, that was on their honeymoon. And in the background there was a windmill. That was kind of cool. Then my mother, this was, mother, mother had this, my mother Edith Lamp was, um, was an angel before, but anyway, she was in Tampa uh, for a visit with relatives and had this picture taken. She said she didn't like the picture because it made her face all white, her neck all white, but she didn't feel good either because she was pregnant with her little a baby son that was born in 1913 and died. So, um, so maybe there's a lot of reasons. And next we have Lottie Lamp and Mrs. Hanlon. Mrs. Hanlon was one of the daughters raised at the Hermitage out on the beach. Uh, and she was living in Tampa at this time and they're at the Methodist Church. Because everybody used to take the bus. We had a bus that stopped out here by on the street and would pick you up and you could go any place you wanted to. Then we have the old, um, uh, this was found up here in the attic in this house. The picture of Mr. L.A. Anger and his first wife, Lottie. Uh, she died at age 36 of cancer in California. And then when he remarried her friend and came to Inglewood, she talked him into coming to Inglewood because she had homesteaded property here over by Tiffany Square. Okay, here's a picture of L.A. Anger Sr. and his oldest son and his youngest son, L.A. Jr. Uh, L.A. Jr. is Esther Horton's father. And uh, that was the last time they were all together. Uh, the older son passed away about two months after this picture was taken. This is a picture of us out, out in the side of the house. The Inglewood Road is in the background. And the first grandchild was Sandy Lamp, Buster's adopted daughter, is Doris is holding her. And my father, Pat's on the left. He liked to garden, banana trees there and everything. Right now there's a house. <laughs> the secrets behind the wall were this, in the, up in the boys' bedroom was a little trap door 
that when I opened it up, I found treasures that little boys would keep. There was a bottle that we wondered what was, had been in it. It had a cork, you can't smell it, old, you know. Anyway, and some little papers and little thingies. So it was kind of cool to find that. Next is the school, uh, the one-room schoolhouse. And we have, oh, let me see. Oh, Pinch, Pinch Kelly, Sarah Kelly, Kelly's last child, Pinch, is right here. That little picture right there. And we have uh, Mrs. Platt. And then we have the other daughter of Sarah, who was, ooh, I'm forgetting her name. She's the one that married this young man, Mr. Clark. In 1909, they had a baby twins, and the, the, she died in childbirth. And the twins lived, and they survived and worked in Englewood. Next is a picture that's kind of interesting. It was at a Lemon Bay Historical Society um, luncheon, and it was Doris, my sister Doris, on the left, and her aunt, Julia. Julia was L.A. Anger's older sister, and this is a picture of her. The ball gone. Um, 09 and I think Julia passed in 05 or something and then interesting I took Julia a picture of her father right here and she said I never saw my father without a, a beard she said he said he had an awful chin that's why he never left it, shaved it he left his beard on so, so that was a story <laughs> and she kept the picture of course because I gave it to her and then we had the Lamps Clothing and Notions store on McCall Road, where Ann's Flower Shop is now. Buster and Doris built it, a cement block building, and it was very successful. It ended in about 1958. And the last picture is a picture of one of my brothers, my brother Buster, oh, he doesn't have his uniform on. My brother Earl has his uniform on, but they both were in the Navy. They liked Navy people from Inglewood because they knew about water. They knew how to manage boats and so forth. So they, uh, they loved the people from this city, this little area. They often called it Lemon Bay area. Not Inglewood area, but Lemon Bay. And anyway, they went off to the Navy. This is the Lamp family picture. Uh, Doris and my brother Earl. One year, our uncle gave us a doll me a doll for Christmas, and she's a very tall doll. My dad went to the Woodmere Lumber Company because they had a store there and bought me an outfit for my doll. Then my dad's oldest brother, Hamp Lamp, and his son, Ray, um, 1942, before Ray went off, well, well, he was in the war too. This is Nellie Anger Lamp. She was Edith Anger's youngest sister. She was only four years old when her mother died in California. And this is her two daughters and her one son, um, Elvin. Elvin is the other one, okay. They did have one son that passed away. Okay, let's go this way. Uh, this is Hamp Lamp and Wilbur sitting, Wilbur sitting on his, Sarah's lap. Sarah was a buck and she came from up north of Popka near Orlando is where she was born. And she moved to, came here by train to Punta Gorda in 1894 with her kids. And as far as the train came, and then Mr. Henry Kelly from Inglewood thought she needed a husband, so he went and married her, and she came here to Inglewood in 1896. Next we have a picture of uh, Jesse, which is really my brother, uh, Buster and Lottie sitting at it looking like they're sitting at a tea party. Kind of cool. They even have shoes on. <laughs> uh, Sarah had uh, children, okay. This children here is Laura, the oldest daughter. The one we saw sitting on the steps of the Inglewood, Inglewood Inn. And let me see, this is the school picture we saw before over there, part of it. Um, the, Joy, Joy Sylvester is, Kelly is the youngest brother of, of the 
lamp boys. And then we have Mr. Buchan. Pete Buchan was Sarah's younger brother. And he came to Iguod in 1902. And we have, oh, wait, let's go down. Then we have his daughter, Margaret, his granddaughter, Carol, Tate, Garrett now. And then we have a picture of school kids, all the school kids that were all in the family. There we have Tommy Summermeyer again. And that we have the two lamp boys, um, Alvin and, ooh, I remember his name, Landis. Landis passed away. He had a, a lump under his arm and he passed away um, at a young age. I think he was nine years old. And here are all Sarah's grandchildren. The little boy that was sitting on the shell casing. And of course, Sandy Lamp and little Clinton. Clinton is still a lamp. He just changed his name back to Lamp from Johnson, as a matter of fact. Then we have a family picture here. Uh, in the neighborhood when people would get together, there's Rose Tate in here. Rose Tate's been around Inglewood for a long time. She married one of the Tate boys. And she said, the only way, if you were going out with the guy to have a date or someplace to go, you would have a family gathering. And that's why she was here. She was here with Earl. She liked Earl. This is a large fish net that Pat bought in the 1930s. Um, that is one thing that Buster had to pay him for in order to get the land that he built the little house on the Indian Mound on. Uh, and of course we have a steps which went up to the windmill. Then we just have pictures of Stanley Lamp and his wife Ruth and the hotel they had. And Stanley also became a flyer of airplanes. Yes. Uh, the Chadwick family is interesting. Um, first we had the Charles Johnson family come in 19, 1892. Uh, he came here, um, just on a little trip, oh, he came here, so I need, he came here and bought, he homesteaded 160 acres uh, from the county line down to the Stump Pass. So he had a lot of acreage and he started a store. He also sold supplies to the Hancock, Hancock Lumber Company here on Yale Street. So he did a lot of good things. And then the Chadwick boy liked the daughter, so he came here and married her in 1901 and built her a house. They owned this fish house. Deshong Fish House was on the end of, end of uh, the, uh, down by Stump Pass. A lot of fishing. I don't see any ice machine there, but they did have ice machine. And when Laura, the girl up here, marries Mr. Chadwick, they became, they lived in the house on the end of the bridge and they collected the 50 cent toll. They also built a building. Um, as you see downstairs, they had lockers for 25 cents, I believe. And upstairs they had bingo, they had dances, they had all kinds of wonderful things, and they sold groceries, and they sold gasoline. So that's cool. Now we have the white elephant there. Okay. Oh, so when they started, they decided in 1927 to start developing the beach uh, to sell property, and they were working, uh, digging around, flattening out the surface and everything, and they found some skeletons, and they were from Indians. It's a big story, yes. The Goff family was notably the first family here in 1878. Uh, they came up the Goff coast and, and into the little lagoon in Lemon Bay, and he, he, he didn't buy land right away, but then he did buy land, and uh, they had a log cabin, and the first child born in Inglewood was born there on Cherokee Street, right on the bay. Um, and then he wanted to farm, so out east of Inglewood, by San Casa, they bought land and he farmed, he and his brothers. He had several wives, okay. This is a picture of his mother. This is his, his second wife, Rebecca. She, she divorced him. She thought that was enough crazy stuff, how those kids and all that worked. So she, 
uh, divorced him and went back. I think she's buried in Riverside. But anyway, and he had his father and his brothers, mostly brothers. They had a reunion on Lemon, the Lemon Bay Centennial, uh, May 27th, uh, 1978. Um, this lady here sitting on the lap of Rebecca's. This is Rebecca, and this is her child, and this is the child today. Oh, well, the, at that time, now she's not. Mm -hmm. So she was holding the, when she was at, her name was M Mrs. Woods. She was from Tampa, and this is when she was holding the youngest child at the reunion. So buy Joe Cortez's book uh, of Inglewood, and you will, can read all these stories. Okay, we're entering a room with a lot of prehistoric things. We have uh, just uh, uh, some shells, some stories about the pioneers, not just pioneers, the explorers from way back when, and uh, some shells. And then down here is interesting. Um, Buster Lamp built a house in 1942 on an Indian mound, and here, these are the digs from there down here on the left. That's some items from there. Some shark's teeth and some bones and arrowheads and so forth. So that was an interesting fact. And Shelley, the granddaughter, still lives on the mound. It has a historic number and everything. We have an interesting display here. Uh, we have a fish net. It's green and it was made by the Davis family and donated to the museum by the Davis family. And the little boats were made by the Goff family. So they're floating on the, they're floating on the uh, fishing net. Because when they went fishing, they didn't take just one boat. They took several little boats along to fill them up and capture all the fish. Because if you were netting fish, you needed a lot of people. We have a lot of paraphernalia from the war um, donated to us, and uh, which is really interesting. And we even have we even have a radio, okay, old time radio. So one of my friends who watched this picture being taken of the monument on Iwo Jima, he was a radio man. Anyway, he had a company in. Rhode Island that did engravings, so he engraved this picture, and my husband Bob Nugent had a, Joe Rosenthal, the artist that designed it, sign the sign, the, so that's kind of cool. Erin Berseth, this picture is not really in Englewood, it's in uh, Sarasota. The Berseth family lived here uh, off and on, but basically they lived in Sarasota because the father could never get a job here. So uh, they were up there, and, and this is a Model T truck, 1919. And of course we have Stanley with his first car and his first airplane. Yes. So then we have just a bunch of local crafts and so forth here. Um, this, this belongs to Lottie. It's a music box. So this is kind of cool. This was a biscuit bowl, uh, a wooden bowl that you would take and put your flour in it and your uh, lard and make your biscuits, stir them all up. And uh, that was your mixing bowl in the old days. It was belonged to one of the uh, Whitaker ladies. We, ha we have all the common household utensils that you need, a coffee pot. And in uh, the little bowl and the wash bowl, of course, another coffee pot. Everybody has a different type of coffee pot. We have books to sell here at the museum. We have Monty's stories, which are new this year. It's a story about a, a young man, an old man, when he decided to write the stories. And we sell the books here for $15. And then we had uh, one of our members uh, did, the, did the illustrations in this book, Gary Walters. And also he did this book here. Timeless Santa, it's about Christmas. So, let me see. Oh, we have The Devil in the White City, which is a Chicago story. 
about the World's Fair. And they had a booth there from, from Grove City promoting this area. So a lot of people saw those, that, those ads and attended that booth, and they all got ideas that Eaglewood would be a wonderful place to come to. Cindy Walters is a crafty person. You could come and buy a kit. I think they're $14.95 is the price of these kits. And you can learn how to do a weaving. You can learn how to make a basket, a needle basket, or you can do a rug. So they're interesting kits, like old time. We have a young lady here sitting in the chair. She's going to tell the story of George Washington Carver, how he gave up on cotton and produced a lot of items for, for, peanut, with pe for peanut farmers to help the black farmer because the cotton was, cotton was controlled by the white man and the black man could not do much or make much money so they, he started the Tuskegee Institute and he was an inventor and he invented a lot of products you could do. As a matter of fact, he was the first person to do the type of farming we do nowadays, like alternate the crops and do things like that. Nobody gives him credit, but he did those things. Anyway, into this research room, you first run into a house. Now, this house was, uh, the Jones family had this doll house, and it was donated to us uh, by Geraldine Scott. And anyway, it was just kind of interesting thing to have. And it just has some local shells and things in, inside, uh, bones. Um, some of these are from out by a Hermitage, uh, where a boat sank, a Cuban smack sank in 1917 with 17 horses on it. Um, we have uh, Indian dress. This is from 1970s. Uh, it's a skirt and a, a blouse. Um, it would cost you today about $2,000. And the Indian jewelry, um, every year a lady would get a bead, a row of beads, and for when she had a birthday, an add-on. So a lot of lady, Indian ladies wore a lot of beads. And you see that all the, this is all patchwork. So each one of these little squares in this are made like you would a quilt. Takes a lot of work. That's why they're so dear. And on the back we have pictures of Steve Kosky up on the left with an Indian jacket on. I mean, Steve Kosky is our county our, our county archaeologist. Um, he lives in Northport. And then um, down below that you see a picture of me wearing this Indian dress with George Luer. George Luer has written a lot of books and done a lot of digs around here on the islands and so forth. And then we just have pictures of the different uh, designs for Indian dresses. Bertha Palmer, Palmer came here in 19, 19, 1910. So in 2010 we had an anniversary and we had all these women and we had at the women's club we also had a fashion show. So the one on the left is really my mother-in-law, Neva Lindquist from Michigan. And then we have Bertha Palmer. That's Bertha. And then over on the right we have Edith Lamp and Lottie and Buster. And then down on the left we have Carolyn Bursif and her husband. They came from Superior, Wisconsin in 1893 after the World's Fair and settled here. And then they did a lot for Inglewood. And then we have Bertha again in her Lala dress. <laughs> and then on the right we have a picture of Grace Bursif. Uh, she married Mr. Platt and that's where she got the Platt name. The Platts are very popular out in uh, Arcadia. They even have a Platt town. Then we're back again to the Sarah Buchan lamp uh, with the story of the lamp family and Sarah's and what every lamp guy did. Uh, next we have the Tamiami Trail which went through, we have now, well, that was back in 1927, or 28, rather. Uh, they went from Tampa to Miami. Uh, it was a trail, okay. And then they decided not to come, yes. They came to Englewood, and then a year later, they decided not to do Englewood anymore and straightened the route out from Venice to Northport. 
Well, we have yeah. the Inglewood Bank, and it says temporary bank, <laughs> and it was temporary. Uh, it was quite successful. A lot of people put their money in it. And the thing is, Mr. Silky got the prison time because he was a he was a cashier and he did some book fancy book work. The bank president is the one that took the money. Oh, that we love this crazy uh, Miss Inglewood limousine. Ah, it was a Studebaker. Yes, we've been trying to find that, but we haven't been able to find it yet. <laughs> it's in, very interesting. Uh, the people in that were selling these properties, Mr. Green in Sarasota, would bring people down here to Inglewood in that big limo. It is a limo. Mm -hmm. Then we have Mr. Buchan, who was the first commissioner here in Inglewood in 1921, in the Buchan's Landing House, which the Lamp Boys built for him, their Uncle Pete. That was their Uncle Pete, remember? And the Lamp Boys did the building. They were the builders. And it's still there today, absolutely. Uh, the family still, the great, the granddaughter still owns it, in the Inglewood Inn. It does have the architect's name on it there, um, Alex Browning or Bauer. And we have the Yale Street uh, first rooming house. So in 1895, the folks wanted uh, a post office. They could not get a post office because there were not enough people living here. So they built the boarding house. And the boarding house is the one on the left toward the water, and then there was the store and then a real estate office. Later, the rooming house became the store. Mr. Goff, uh, who was the first pioneer here on Lemon Bay and moved out to San Casa and had a farm, uh, we honored him a few years back with a, a cross. We gave him that metal cross. They even had a woman dressed in a morning outfit down on the left. She had a big hoop, 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 hoop dress on. It was very impressive. And a lot of the golf family was there, okay, to celebrate the day. That was really a cool happening. So we have a lot of service uh, clothing um, that was donated to us. So uh, they're mostly Navy, some Army, and so forth. So we have a sewing machine. Now me, Lottie, I sewed all my clothes. I have the dress on I sewed too. All my clothes were homemade, and I always went to Sarasota to pick up the fabric. And what I would always buy the best fabric I could find with the money I had. I'd catch the bus, go to Sarasota for the day, uh, buy a, something sweet at noon, buy the clock, and sit out on the main street and watch people. And that's what I did. Uh, besides gardening in Englewood, that was my love, sewing. And we have a sewing machine, a treadle sewing machine. And we have pictures of Florence Johnson, our first post mist mistress, um, in the new post office. First she was in the corner lot, which was a, a Army or Air Force building. And uh, then they built the new post office. But the post office didn't have enough parking. So they made us move the post office out on River Road. So then we have a bucket airport from movie stars to mosquitoes. Uh, that was kind of interesting. Uh, we, ho we had hoped they had, they had plotted it, Hygieia, to be a subdivision for movie stars. Well, it never happened because we had the bust in 1926 after the bad hurricane. Nobody wanted to come back to Florida and everybody seemed to run out of money. And then we had the, bo the, boom time, the boom when we had the crash in 1929. So Inglewood started back in 1946 after the war. It became a booming place because everybody wanted to come back to the place they found when they were in, they were in the service in Florida. Oh, and the mosquitoes, because mosquitoes are bad. Oh my gosh, in heavens, they were bad. Oh, they were like a, like a, oh, like a plague. And so people, so the government decided to do mosquito spray. Oh, Peter Buchan suggested the airport uh, because nothing happened at Hygieia. So he suggested that would be a good place. Uh, he was a county commissioner, so he knew what land was all around. And he also purchased a lot of land that was all around. Okay, um, 
anyway, and he, he said that was a good piece of property, just like the Orange Street Rec Center is also a property that he suggested because after WW2, the government wanted to start parks. So he suggested that piece of land on Wentworth Street. And today it's still an active park. It's going to be renewed with more pickleball courts. They gave the building to the school, de school, school department. So maybe the school who's building more building now because they have so many children are probably will take over that one corner, but they still will have the basketball court, pickleball courts, and new bathrooms and so forth. So it will be a lovely, lovely place. Look forward to that. So I want to thank you all for visiting the museum during History Week. Uh, it's a swell time to catch up on all the history in Englewood and also to visit virtually this year all the buildings. But look forward to open houses in the future when we all catch up with this bad bug that's been chasing us. Okay, and thank you.